Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I'm, I'm, I'm here with my stage manager, my executive producer, my son John's here tonight, two times. And we have a huge night. We have a huge night for you, because we are live right there after the final night of the Democratic National Convention, and it has been a whirlwind week. But now it's over. Bob's your uncle and Joe's your candidate, because tonight was the dramatic season finale of our DNC Spectacular. Democrats assemble. Are you fired up? And so we fight. It is what it is. Smash! <laughs> I did not expect that. Every night of the convention has had a theme this week. Last night was a more perfect union, and tonight was America's Promise, which is a lovely theme and also, I believe, a delicious store brand margarine. We hold these truths to taste just like butter. Now that we've reached the end, we can reflect on a convention that really had it all. Stars, everyday people, Billy Porter serenading Billy Porter. Get a room, you one. The Democrats gave it their all this week, and even though COVID forced the convention to be socially distanced, I think I might have contracted a case of the hopes. No dry cough, but my face did leak several times. So early on in the night, we got a dire warning about the urgency of global warming from California Governor Gavin Newsom, seen here standing in front of the only tree in California that isn't on fire. Then the convention struck what I felt was a very aspirational and optimistic tone with a video titled... This time next year, I hope the virus is in check. This time next year, I hope and pray that America will have restored democracy to the world. Oh, my turn? Um, this time next year, I hope I don't have to do this voice ever again, because face it, it's been three and a half years, the impression's not getting any better, and I'm pretty sure I'm getting polyps. We heard from one of the younger Democrats in the party, uh, Andrew Yang, who reminded us of who he was. You might know me as the guy who ran for president talking about math and the future. Yeah, but mostly I know you as the guy who promised me $1,000. Where's my money, Andy? <laughs> Yang was blunt about the state of the country. We are in a deep, dark hole, and we need leaders who will help us dig out. He's right. America is in a deep, dark hole, and Trump's message is, it puts the lotion on its skin. Then... It was time for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to a public for which it stands. Oh, my God. That is so adorable. Please vote, everybody. If not for your future, then for that kid's future so he can grow up in the republic he deserves. Now, tonight's convention host was none other than friend of the show, the great... Julia Louis-Dreyfus, officially making the Biden campaign the new adventures of old Joe. Julia talked about Biden's commitment to his faith. Joe Biden goes to church so regularly that he doesn't even need tear gas and a bunch of federalized troops to help him get there. Damn, Trump, you just got veeped in the teeth. Julia's doing my job for me, and she looks way better in the heels. There's a reason I'm sitting down right now. No, we got a fantastic musical performance tonight by John Legend and the rapper Common. But of course, as a middle-aged white person, I don't really understand hip hop unless it's about Alexander Hamilton. And after that incredibly moving performance, the obvious follow-up was this rap master. I'm historian John Meacham. And if you've got kids, I'll teach them. I've chronicled many presidential administrations. I wrote the book Your Dad Takes on Beach Vacations. A wick a wick. 
Meacham reached back to the words of Dr. King. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we are tied together in the single garment of destiny. Unfortunately, since about mid-March, that garment has been sweatpants. Then we heard from Wisconsin Senator Tammy Baldwin. We all have stories like this. Stories about a time when the system was rigged against us, when we were counted out, left out, pushed out. Just think of what we've heard these past four days. Okay, um, we've been live for the past four days, so it's all uh, been a bit of a blur. I, I do remember John Kasich got lost on a dirt road. Billie Eilish sang on the spooky set from Riverdale and big structural calamari. Despite the virtual setting, Tammy Baldwin did her best to get the audience involved. Say it with me there at home, a nation that builds back better. Okay, I know the convention's over, but is it too late to just to punch up that slogan? You know, maybe make it a jingle. I want my better back, better back, better back ribs. No? All right. There were testimonials from a lot of Republicans, like Mike from Rhode Island. This year's election is very important. Uh, for the record, I don't actually have a suntan. I've been bobbing for calamari and a vat of marinara. Hey, Yang, where's my thousand bucks? I'm in deep with the calamari guy, and I told him you'd float me. He's coming for my thumbs. He's going to bread them and fry them. Seriously. Then Julia introduced another former presidential candidate. Say hi to Mayor Pete. Hi. Hi. Hi, Pete. Pete. Over here. Hey, Pete, Pete, Good Pete. Whew. Buttigieg used his own life as an example of how things can change for the better. Just over 10 years ago, I joined a military where firing me because of who I am wasn't just possible, it was policy. Now, in 2020, it is unlawful in America to fire someone because of who they are or who they love. The very ring on my finger a wedding we celebrated here where I'm standing reflects how this country can change. Well, Pete, this ring on my finger reflects how we can't ever change because I haven't been able to take this sucker off since a particularly big steak dinner in 2007. Why do you think I'm still with Melania? Do we have the bolt cutters? Michael Bloomberg appeared in front of a billionaire's worth of flags. Bloomberg argued that he wasn't there to prove Trump's a bad guy. He was there to prove Trump's bad at his job. Would you rehire or work for someone who ran your business into the ground and who always does what's best for him or her, even when it hurts the company, and whose reckless decisions put you in danger, and who spends more time tweeting than working? Would you listen to someone who spent $500 million on a presidential campaign winning only American Samoa? Don't answer that. Bloomberg did his best to appear human. Donald says we should vote for him because the economy was great before the virus. Huh? <laughs> Bloomberg sounds like he's acting in a local appliance store commercial. The other guys charge you extra for the washer-dryer removal. To that I say, huh? <laughs> Call now. Then, it was time to hear from the candidate himself in an autobiographical video. He told an endearing story about his mom standing up for him. When his teacher mimicked him and Joe ran home from school, his mother drove him back. My mother stood up. Oh, five foot two of her. If you ever talk to my son like that again, I'll come back and rip that damn bonnet off your head. Wow! Rip the bonnet off her head. The corn does not fall far from the pop. Joe, why, did, why have you been hiding that story? You gotta put that on a yard sign. Biden 2020, my mom threatened to beat up a nun. <laughs> it was then time for Biden's speech. Would he land it? Good evening. So far, so good. Keep going. Here and now, I give you my word. If you entrust me with the presidency, I will draw on the best of us, not the worst. I'll be an ally of the light. As opposed to Trump, 
who is an ally of the white. We don't have, we don't have the music on the live show? Nope. Okay, my, my mistake. He had some straight talk on this viral crisis Trump is succussing. The president keeps telling us the virus is going to disappear. He keeps waiting for a miracle. Well, I have news for him. No miracle is coming. Are you sure there's no miracle? Because, Mr. Vice President, you're kind of nailing this. Joe continued to take inspiration from those who came before him. You know, my dad was an honorable, decent man. He got knocked down a few times pretty hard. But he always got back up. They said, you're never going to keep him down. He used to say, Joe, never forget Chubbawamba. And he meant it. He had a whiskey drink. He had a lager drink. He had a whiskey drink. He had a lager drink. <laughs> I forgot the words to Chubbawamba. Sue me. And he talked about the importance of family and how that shaped his life. I've said many times, no man deserves one great love in his life, let alone two. I know just what you mean, Joe. I have been blessed to have both original recipe and extra crispy. Biden then issued a call to the American people. In times as challenging as these, I believe there's only one way forward. As a united America, a united America, united in our pursuit of a more perfect union, united in our dreams of a better future for us and for our children, united in our determination to make the coming years bright. Are you ready? Yes! But I got the rest of the show to do. You know what? Screw it. Just put on a rerun of Bob Hart's Abishola. Joe needs me. Let's go! I'm being told that I uh, contractually have to finish the show. Well, here's the deal. Biden spoke for over 10 minutes and addressed all the pain that Trump has inflicted upon our country, all the possibilities for healing our nation, but most importantly, not once did he whine about shower pressure. Throughout the convention, there was a common theme, Joe Biden's history of loss and suffering. Surprisingly, we didn't get a lot of jokes out of it, but there was a reason the convention hammered this point home, to cast Joe Biden in stark contrast with Donald Trump. Donald Trump couldn't overcome any of the challenges of his presidency because he never had to overcome anything at all. This is the grown-up version of the college essay that asks you to write about a challenge you faced. And instead of scrambling to put together a story about bouncing back from getting second chair in your high school's a cappella group, Joe Biden has a real answer. This evening, Joe Biden showed himself to be a man who is decent, compassionate, flawed, but honest. And that is water in the desert. He's the sort of person who thinks before he says things. And when he gaffs, which he does, Often, it's because his heart gets ahead of his words. He cares, and he tries his hardest. He's like a lot of people I know, and you do too, which shouldn't seem remarkable, but right now it is. And when Trump tweets his all caps rebuke tomorrow morning, it's just gonna show how our present is not presidential, but Joe Biden is. We've got a great show for you tonight. Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton is here. Stick around.